Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. So today is a special Sabbath because we have our youth participating in our service. So for announcements, um, in your bulletins, there's an outreach and youth ministry yard sale and clothing swap on May 7th. Volunteers are needed. We don't have too many. Um, it's from nine, to, from 9 to 12 or from 12 to 3 p.m. So please pick up a flyer if you are interested. Um, a, new worship, a new prayer warrior group is being formed under the guidance of Cecilia and Judith. So if you are interested or would like to learn more, please get in touch with either of these ladies. The social committee is planning a special recognition of high school and college graduates. So if you are or know someone who is graduating this year, please contact Janet Lane. And in recognition of a Mother's Day, on Sunday, May 14th, we have a special surprise on Sabbath the 13th for all of our moms and motherly figures. And you can read more about the announcements in our bulletin. And now, can I have the praise team come up at this time? Our first song will be Jesus Loves Me. Christian soldiers.
song, More About Jesus. Now I invite you to uh, pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your loving kindness that never fails us. We invite your Holy Spirit to be with us today. Please guide our thoughts and minds, strengthen us and fill us with your peace. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Um, today I will be reading a short story called Discipling a Dentist from Trinidad. Romans chapter 10, verses nine, nine through 10. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has, ra that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Magdalena lives in, lives in the island nation of Trinidad, in Tobago. After school, she walks to a nearby pharmacy to wait for her dad to pick her up. While she waits, she watches the people pa pass by and wonders if they love Jesus. One day, Magdalena asks her dad, may I give tracts to the people who walk by the pharmacy? That's a great idea, her dad said. He gave her some tracts to share with, uh, with others after school. Magdalena gave away all her tracks to people passing by. When her dad arrived, she announced, I need more tracks. Her dad gladly gave her more tracks to give out. Magdalena recognized a dentist who regularly, who regularly walked by the pharmacy. She gave him a tract whenever he passed. One day, she asked her dad, I've been giving tracts to a dentist. May I talk to him about Jesus? Her dad gladly agreed. The next day, Magdalena watched for the dentist when he walked by. She asked him, do you know Jesus? I've heard about Jesus, but I don't know him, the dentist said. May I tell you about God, Magdalena asked. The man invited her to come to his office the next afternoon. Her dad gave her permission for her to go and gave her a Bible to give to the dentist. The next day, Magdalena visited the dentist's office. She gave him the Bible and he gladly accepted it. Magdalena visited the dentist every day after school. They read stories from the Bible and talked about them. 
the dentist began to believe in Jesus, so Magdalena invited him to church on Sabbath. He smiled and accepted her invitation. Dad, Magdalena said excitedly, the dentist is coming to church with us on Sabbath. The next Sabbath, Magdalena and her family picked up the dentist on their way to church. Your daughter is wonderful, the dentist told her parents. I didn't know anything about Jesus before I met her, but now I know him. Magdalena loved sharing God's love on the streets of her town. We can share God's love too. Whether we give our pamphlets, invite, to, invite friends to meetings, or give a percentage-based promise offering along with our tithes, we are sharing God's love. If you don't know how you can share God's love, ask God for some ideas. He will surely answer your prayer. May the deacons come forward at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that I ask your blessings on this Sabbath day. And I ask that you help this service inspire others. Bless these offerings that and that they may reach the people who need to hear about you and Jesus. And in Jesus' name, amen. It's now time for children's story and offering. Can the children please come forward? The, the money in the children's offering is going to, to Adventist education.
May, may the children sit over here. Who can tell me the price of a child? There is no price. Yes, there is no price. $300? There's no price for a child. You are all very valuable in God's sight. So today's story is about a, one of those child, children who is very valuable. About 200 years ago, there lived a family of seven children. And the mother was Susanna. And one day, the house, their family house set on fire. And they, just, and they went inside to make sure all the children were right. They, they, had, to, they had to go and rescue a young baby named Charles. He was sleeping in his crib, unaware, yet they brought him out because God's providence that God knew this child would be raised to be one of a great man. So after they had gotten out, they heard a, a, a small, help me! And they, they, went, they looked outside the window. They couldn't see anyone. They heard it again, help me! They they looked at the window. It was a young, it was a little boy named John. He was six years old. How many of you are six? Okay. He's like, they said they had forgotten him in the midst of this confusion. They tried, they said, let's get a ladder. There was no ladder. The, the mom, Susanna, prayed, oh God, please spare this child. And then the father came, stacked, and another man came. They stacked on each other, on top of each other. And then the father grabbed six-year-old John out. And his mother said, John, you are so valuable. I almost lost you. Surely God has something special for you. You are like a brand plucked from the fire. And... And both John and Charles had something special. They both became the great John Wesley and Charles Wesley, great preachers. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. John Wesley became the founder of the Methodist Church, and he was a and he rescued so, and he helped so many people come to Jesus. He, Charles Leslie became a good, a, a, a song hymn writer and wrote some of our beloved hymns. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hark the herald angels sing. And for a thousand tongues to sing. John Wesley, whenever he was preach, when he preached, he always told someone, you are, you are valuable. God loves you so much. You are so valuable. He sent his only son to die for you. Who can tell? There's n we are all like John and Charles Wesley, a brand snatched from the, the furnace. All of us are like that. God has something in us, all of us. Because he loves us. And may this, and as today is Children's Sabbath, may the children all become like John Wesley, a brand snatched from the fire. Who would like to pray? Um, dear Jesus, thank you for everybody, and uh, I'm everyone's going to have a new baby. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, happy Sabbath. It's time for the congregational prayer. Those who can kneel, please join us. And those who want to sit, just bow down your head and let us pray. Now that's how we'll be leading us in the congregational prayer. Church, let us pray. Creator of the universe, King of kings, and Lord of lords, I will worship you forever, our sovereign one, your holy one of Israel. I will bless your holy name. My soul will praise you, Lord. All my inmost being will praise your holy name. My soul will always praise you, Lord. I will not forget all your benefits. For the Lord that redeems our life from the pit and crowns us with love and compassion. You are the Lord that satisfies our desires with good things, so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. I will praise you and magnify your holy name. Father, your word says in Second Chronicles seven fourteen to 15, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek by faith and turn from their wicked ways, and you will hear us from heaven and forgive our sins, and you will hear our land. Your eyes will be opened and our ears attentive to our prayers offered here. So, Father, forgive us our sins and heal us all guarded here from our self-righteousness. Father, I want to thank you for Jesus and the cross. He died for our sins and he has given us eternal life as a free gift. Help us to exhibit the perfect qualities of Jesus in our human flesh. Help us to seek you and forsake our wicked ways and evil thoughts. Cause us to turn to you with our whole heart. Have mercy on us and pardon us. Um, help us to experience true Sabbath rest as you originally intended. I pray for all the children here. Help us to know that we are all wonderfully made in your image. We are all special in your eyes. And you know everything about us. Maybe before we were conceived, you chose us when we planned creation. And the hairs on our head are numbered. Help us to be obedient to your holy words and also obedient to our parents. Help us to love you in all our ways. Guide our steps and let our light shine for you only. Bless the church, bless the pastors, bless the congregation, and help us grow in unity and in love as one big family. I'll continue to restore you for your magnificent works. Come soon, Lord, for your children wait for your soul to return. Hear our humble prayers in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading is found in John 6, verses 8 and 9. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far, how far will they go among so many? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word.
Transitioning from using horses to cars, a person had a horse in the, that got, decided to stay in the middle of the road and didn't want to move anywhere else. So he tried to convince it to come off the road, but it didn't want to. It just stayed in the middle of the road. The, unfortunately, cars were coming, but these people had to, had to wait because the horse was still in the road. So eventually, they had a long line of traffic because a horse decides to stay in the road and doesn't want to move anywhere else. So then they see a boy with half an apple, and they ask him if they can use the half an apple to try to convince the horse to get off the road. The boy only had one apple, and it's really only half, but he decided he was willing to give it anyway. So he gave the apple to the man, and so they used it to get the horse off the road. So then the traffic was able to go by safe still go by. All the traffic was freed by a boy who was just willing to share. Since today we are celebrating Children's Sabbath, I thought I was going to speak on the boy who gave his lunch to Jesus. So it, the story begins with after these things. And so what things happened, so John the Baptist had been imprisoned and he had been killed. So Jesus took his disciples away to a secluded place where they would not be disturbed so they could, I guess, pray. So at the same time, multitudes were looking for Jesus. So the disciples had known what had happened to John the Baptist and probably they were worried about what would happen to them. But, the, well, Jesus let the multitudes come to them anyway. In the Desire of Ages, it says some among them had noticed the direction in which Christ and his disciples had gone from the place they were. That means people are probably watching Jesus all the time, and they knew where he was going. Jesus lifted his eyes and saw a great crowd following him. The Bible says Jesus' heart was moved of compassion, even though he didn't get to rest, and he was tired, because after, if, if they saw where he was, they probably were with him anyway, or they were at least watching him. So Jesus does not get to rest, the moment he tries to rest, there are people who already want to see him. So he didn't complain. Instead, he asked Philip where they can get some food to feed them. Because it, these people who were following after Jesus, they hadn't, probably hadn't eaten because they were trying to follow him so much. And they didn't, have, they didn't bring anything because they probably weren't, didn't think they had enough time. 
So the disciples asked Jesus to send them away to the towns to buy food because they didn't bring any themselves. Jesus saw the people and they were and Jesus knew that they needed something to eat. And so he decided that he needed to find a way to feed them. So as he as I said, he asked them where they could get food. The disciples though didn't think they had any. They didn't have any money either. It would take a year's pay to get enough money to feed them all. And also there were no like stores or fast food restaurants that they could go to. They are still a long way. So they forgot unfortunately the disciples forgot that Jesus has that Jesus multiplied um, well, not multiply, but he turned water into wine, so it shouldn't be hard for him to make bread, but they forgot about that. Usually when we encounter any problem, we think that it's not possible to fix the problem, and sometimes we try to come up with our own solutions, which don't work. Jesus does not need our solutions, which don't work. Jesus needs people who are willing to do what he asked them to, and in this case, he needed someone who is willing to give his, what he had. So there was a little boy in this story who brought his own lunch. And many people f focus on Jesus multiplying his food, but not many people remember about this boy. His name's not even mentioned because he brought only five loaves and two fish. And we have about 15,000 people, 5,000 males, but we're assuming it could be 15,000, including women and children. Also, this boy did not really bring much. He only brought bread and fish. He probably packed his lunch himself because his mother would not let him eat just bread and fish. He would probably, she would probably want him to bring fruits and vegetables. I wouldn't put vegetables in my own lunch anyway. Well, in those days, it didn't matter much for, children didn't seem to matter much to the society, but God decided to use a child anyway. Children might feel like they're young and God can't really use them, but this is not true. We can see in this story God wants those who are willing, and when we bring our gifts to Christ, no matter how small they are, he will use us to do wonders for him. We shouldn't give God in order to receive something, though. That's selfish. But, a little, but just something is that if the boy said no... There, wouldn't, there would probably have to be another solution. Jesus could, could make another solution, but it would have ended differently. But the boy could have said no. He wasn't forced to give, but he decided to anyway. We know that God used this boy to do, many great, to do a great thing and feed all these people. And he can do the same for us today. We don't know who here has something he can use we don't know who here will be chosen to do something for God, but what we do know is that when they are, something great will come out of it. God is not going to force us to give, all, but all we can do is be willing and pray that God will reveal more of himself to us and help us to be willing to give cheerfully like this boy. May the praise team come forward to sing their last song. <laughs> Please stand for our closing song. We have this hope.
Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to run this service. We pray that all who are listening may have been touched by this and that this was not just that they hear it and they go home and nothing changes. We pray that this has an impact on everyone that is here. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Just a reminder is that uh, you may be seated. Oh, no, <laughs> the deacons are going to dismiss you by rows, so the f- ones in the f- so they'll come forward, and the ones in the front, and they'll just let you know that you you're, you can go now, and you can go to the front there.